Hello and welcome to week 27, I think, of Vibad. Guys, this is our last week, so yeah, I'm kind of sad. I didn't think I'd be sad, but this is our last week of Vibas, and then I gotta study all these videos and um, memorize all them, so exciting stuff. Um, so today's question, is about Christine Dibzot. Our question of the day is, what can we learn about the lives of late medieval women through the writings of Christine de Pizan? So we, although we often like to group all of medieval people as having the same mindset and um, ideas, uh, through the writings of Christine de Pizan, we see um, this was not true, that the role of women uh, and the status of women was changing among the upper classes. Uh, so the three things that Christine Pipizan's writing teaches us, I'm sorry, there's a garbage truck in the background. So that's distracting. But I figured it was a nice enough day that I needed to open my windows even though it's gonna give me bad allergies, but that's okay. Because I wanna hear the birds. Anyway, um, first Christine teaches us chivalry and courtly love shaped how women's roles were perceived. Second, um, women's roles in middle and upper class were different from the modern imagination. And third, the role of women was beginning to undergo a change. So do you see a theme here? We're learning about the role of women today. Well, man. Anyway, so before we dive into this lovely diva, let us let us get a little background on who this Christine de Pizan lady was. Um, so Christine broke a lot of the traditional um, standards of medieval women. Um, Christine and her family were originally from Italy, and her father was an astrologer, um, and he was asked to um, work in the court of Charles V in France. So their family moves to France, yada yada. Um, and yeah, uh, Christine de Pizan grew up basically in France and her father really believed that even his daughter um, would needed an education. So she got a really good education and um, at the age of 15, she married Etienne de Castel, um, and even after she married, um, her husband still let her continue her education, um, and together Etienne and her had three kids. Um, so her life's going pretty well. She seems, um, from her writings, we can learn that she had a pretty good relationship with her husband. Um, there seems to be like actual like love even though it was an arranged marriage they really cared for each other um, but tragedy struck a few meal a few meals a few years into her marriage um, her father lost his job as court astrologer and then he died and then a few years later Etienne dies and um, Christine is left as a widow to um, provide for her three tiny children and her mother. Um, and as a woman, she, she couldn't really um, just get a job anywhere at this time. And so her family was, was left pretty poor. Um, but what she did have was a pen and a paper. So she put the pen to the paper. She used some ink and she would write for um, rich people and they would send her money. So it was that same patron-client relationship um, of ancient Rome. Um, yeah, so Christine was remarkable, was a remarkable writer and her supporters would support her family um, in exchange for her writings. So, um, the first 
thing we learned from Christine's writings is that the cult of chivalry and courtly love shaped how women's roles were perceived. So what you may ask is courtly love and the code of chivalry. Um, so the chivalry or the code of chivalry in the late many middle ages um, emphasized social and moral virtues and piety and charity um, and it established a notion of honor and nobility amongst um, the upper class men and knights. Um, and courtly love seems to be founded by um, by Bothavius, who was a poet. Um, and he talks about if love who rule, quote, if love who rules the sky could rule your hearts as well. Um, and this is an example of um, the spiritual force of love, according to Bothavius. Both theos, both theos. Um, who basically is saying that um, love or the spiritual force of God, which is love, um, rules over the earth. Um, and if you can remember back to um, one of the previous weeks this semester where we talked about hierarchy, um, we learned about the great chain of being. Um, and St. Augustine says that love um, or the charity, um, Cartius, uh, really permeates the hierarchy of life. Um, in all of it, there is Cartius, charity. Um, so this hierarchical worldview um, really emphasized love and um, and through this, people um, focused on, on the ideas of, of Cartier's charity or a more, the love of like more worldly things, so money, um, possessions, power, people. Wow, power, possessions, people. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great alliteration. Thank you. Um, so yeah, medieval people pursued these things, and um, they expressed this, this amour and, and their love for women or men um, in literature. And shut up, garbage can. And um, this is going to be a long Coffee's kicking in, and I am just just in a weird mood. I have so much to get done, so let's just take a moment to reflect on how many papers I haven't done, and it's Tuesday. <laughs> okay, back to the Viva, guys. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Okay. Um, so basically, courtly love um, was this construct of the medieval world, and um, it was really expressed in literature. Um, and it was the expression of knightly worship towards um, a woman. And this woman was the object of affection. Um, Par Dr. Parker says, quote, the act of loving was in itself ennobling and refining the, the man of fullest expression of what was potentially, I don't know what I was on when I was writing this, but I can't read a thing, was potentially So basically, um, this act of loving the woman was refining for the man. It was um, it was an experience that he went through, and um, 
Um, and let's go back to the hierarchy for a sec. So we talked about hierarchy and love being kind of connected. Um, well, if we remember the feudal system, um, feudalism focused on the Lord and the vassal. Um, in a similar way, we see this embodied in um, the relationship between a lover and his his lady. Um, so yeah, there was this idea of obey, like you would obey your lord if you were a vassal. You would obey and serve your lady um, as you were her lover. So there's this analogy and comparison between lord and vassal and uh, lady and lover, where the lady was put in this esteemed position um, to be obeyed and served and was kind of this like heavenly celestial being um, that was like placed on this pedestal for her lover to worship. And in courtly love there didn't necessarily need to be um, any, it was more of like a respect for the lady than it was like you're gonna like have sex with her. Um, and usually the lady was married so in courtly love um there was this like it was like a game of love basically so um this married this lover would be like in love with a married woman um and it would create this love triangle and this this jealousy and all this that was supposed to um was all part of courtly love. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining courtly love at all, but it makes sense in my mind. And oh, yeah, we can see examples like Lancelot and Guinevere and Tristan and Icelot, um, who were both examples of this um, married women and this um, knight or wooer um, that was not her husband. Um, and this was not an actual courtly love wasn't really didn't really change um the role of women necessarily um if we look at it from a social historian's um, point of view but this it was more of like a literature um, and it really did affect society um so courtly love shaped culture um women were given preeminence in marriage and courtship and um, they they have ever since then really like they've stayed in that role of preeminence um, and they're not just the objects of love but they have some like power in their relationship um so let's move on with this first point um, the second thing that Christine de Pizans, um teaches us is that women's roles in the middle and upper classes were far different than we imagine them. Um, so Christine proves this well. So we in the modern imagination often think of women as not having any um, status uh, and just kind of being like her husband's sidekick. But Christine de Pizan was a writer who took care of her family after she became widowed and, and actually even was the breadwinner for them. Um, and Alexei Bovey says, um, there were some women who exercised power, providing a challenge to the stereotypical image of medieval women as oppressed and subservient. So Bovey is, is saying that this modern imagination of women isn't all isn't true um, and Christine talks about um, she says quote one day I w as I was sitting alone in my study surrounded by books on all on all kinds of subjects devoting myself to literary studies my usual habit my mind dwelt at length 
on the weighty opinions of various authors whom I have studied for a long time. So we see Christine in a study, something you often don't imagine when you're thinking of medieval women. Um, so secondly, we learn from Christine's writings that the role of women in middle and upper classes were different than we imagined. And then the third thing that we learn is that the role of women was undergoing a period of change. So, um, the 15th century woman had many, many rights. She could own property, um, she could be a business owner, she could divorce her husband if he was not if he was mistreating her. And um, there were examples of women scholars, writers, um, warriors, and businesswomen in the medieval 15th century. That is so loud. I'm so sorry, Sarah. society. Um, things like jousting, uh, we can see the role of women in that. It used to be just a method of training, um, but later there was music and it was kind of like a dance. Uh, and yeah, the courts, the royal courts um, focus a lot more on the arts. So music and poetry and fashion and, and cuisine all were focuses of the royal courts and then um women took places of power so in england in 1397 margaret marshall was made a duchess in her own right by richard the second so she had a place of power in 1397 so write that down in the history books um and and one reason why we see this profound impact in the role of women was the Black Plague, or the Black Death, um, or the Great Plague, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, this really profoundly impacted the role of women because um, with such decimation of the population, hey, that rhymes. Decimation of the population. No, that doesn't. Never mind. Um, women were forced to take on the roles that men used to be allowed to do, um, occupations, yeah, so occupations that only men were allowed to do before, um, women had to, out of necessity, um, take on these roles because they were a lot less people. Um, so, and after the printing press, after Gutenberg invented the printing press, there was a lot more literacy um, and there was a need for literacy in places like England where they needed um, people to read court documents and this allowed for the education of women um, so yeah the, almost spill my coffee again that would be fun it would go back to Hildegard again um, but yeah, we see this role, the role of women changing and the male attitude um, that once permeated society, the male attitude that women were corruptors of men and therefore needed to be kept in check by men um, was questioned during this time period. And Christine, Christine, uh, Christine also um, objected to this idea of women as correct corruptors of men and she writes quote no matter which way I looked at it and no matter how much I turned the matter over in my mind I could find no evidence from my own experience to bear out such a negative view of female nature and habits so Christina woman herself is saying all these men have been writing for years and generations that women are corruptors of men but in my own experience as a woman this isn't true 
Um, so Christine challenges this this view of women. Um, so through Christine's writings, we learn about the late medieval ages. We learn three things. First, that chivalry, the cult of chivalry and courtly love shaped how women's roles were perceived. Um, second, uh, women's roles in middle and upper classes were different from the modern imagination. And third, the roles of women were undergoing a significant change during this time period. <sighs> Guys, I just keep, it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. These vivas just have gone downhill. They used to be like serious. I used to retake my vivas if I messed up, but now really give a crap anymore so yeah that's fun hope you guys are having a great week um stay safe stay healthy drink lots of coffee keep saying you know do what you gotta do bye